crack a 16-year-old cold case. Christopher Tompkins was last seen January of 2002 walking away from a survey job in a wooded area of Highway 85 in Ellerslie. Deputies continue to ask for tips in this case as they remain vigilant about learning what happened to Tompkins. If you have any information on this missing person case, you're asked to call the Harris County Sheriff's Office or the GBI. Hello folks, and welcome back to another case study where I talk about and analyze some of the strangest state and national park missing person cases out there. Every once in a blue moon, I come across a case where the circumstances are too strange not to cover it in this series, such as in this scenario. I briefly covered this case in one of my earlier volumes, but always felt it needed a more in-depth look as it has been nagging at me for quite some time now. This segment follows the disappearance of a young man who vanished under some pretty strange and unusual circumstances while doing some survey work with a four-man crew in the remote reachers of the Georgian woodland and based on the evidence found at the scene, we're all left with more questions than answers. So let's begin. In January of 2002, a then 20-year-old named Christopher Carlton Thompson was last seen walking back from a worksite not far from the Franklin D. Roosevelt State Park, which is part of the Greater Georgia State Park System and managed by the National Park Service. At the time he went missing, he was last in line with three others and spaced no more than 50 feet apart. And what he left behind in his place makes this case so baffling. And one can't help but think that something sinister may be involved here. According to MysteriousUniverse.org and EagleFlyer.com, the day he vanished was just like any other work day. On the morning of January 25th of 2002, 20-year-old Christopher Thompson said goodbye to his mother whom he lived with and left for his job as a surveyor at approximately 8 a.m. He then traveled to his job site to meet up with the other three co-workers at an expanse of lightly wooded area off County Line Road near Highway 85 in Ellerslie, Georgia. The team moved as a unit, each crew member spaced about 50 feet apart in a line formation as they worked their way in the same direction through the forest. Eventually they would make it onto the road to start heading back to their work vehicle. Christopher, who was last in line, was keeping regular communication with the others, and he and the man in front of him were within a nice shot of each other. At one point, the surveyor in front glanced back toward Christopher, who had just been talking to him moments prior to find that he was suddenly inexplicably gone. This caused some confusion amongst the others, considering he had been there, quote, seconds before. Whether or not the statement came directly from the co-workers is not clear, but according to the majority of sources covering this case, that appears to be the general consensus. Immediately, the others called out to him and began searching, backtracking to a spot which would yield their first clue as to what may have happened to the man. And what they found made things even stranger. Nearby was one of Christopher's boots hanging from a barbed wire fence that stretched through the area. In a patch of grass next to the boot were his work tools, a blue fiber from his work pants, and 12 cents in change scattered all over the ground. It would not be until 1 p.m. that afternoon, or four hours later after his disappearance, that the other surveyors would call their boss to report him missing. I find this piece of information a bit intriguing, as four hours is much too long in my opinion, and I would like to know the reasons it took so long to do so. On top of that, Christopher's mother would not be notified of the incident until after 4 p.m. Now this could have been due to the time it took the employer to gather his emergency contact info 
once they were finally notified by the co-workers. Even when she was informed that they would have to wait 24 hours for the police to coordinate an official search effort, and they eventually did, they too were unable to find any other clues. A more intensive search was launched, but nothing was turned up until several months later when the missing man's other work boot was found by chance and by a farmer who owned a private section of land just 900 yards away from the location he disappeared from. Before we get into the search itself, let's talk about the area where this all occurred. Just to give you an idea of what both Christopher and Search and Rescue were up against. As we can see from the photos, we're looking at a semi-heavily wooded area that is sectioned off by a privately owned property and a zigzag of highways, residential and service roads. The area in question is literally a few yards off of Highway 27, just left of where Christopher was last seen. To the south, there's County Line Road, which cuts through both Dozier Creek, the highway, and Mojave Road, the exact road he vanished from. About a mile to the north, we've got Faulkner Lake, and directly to the east, there's Russell Road, which is right by the Burian Covenant Church. This entire area is surrounded by a perimeter of roads, and as you can see, this didn't occur out in the middle of nowhere, but in an area frequently traveled by others. There are several smaller bodies of water that can be found throughout that entire region, and one of these is exactly where Christopher's boot would eventually be found by a farmer just 900 yards away, northeast of where he vanished, in a swampy area next to a small creek. So it's obvious to me this was the direction Christopher either went or was taken to. Directly to the east, and about 10 minute drive away, we have Franklin D. Roosevelt State Park, which is adjacent to Warm Springs Road. But what I want to know, did search and rescue spend an adequate amount of time searching these swampy areas nearby creeks? Just by looking at Google Images, there are plenty of areas divers could have combed through. When we look at Google Street View, we can see just how small the creek is, so it should have been relatively easy to search through. If we take a look around this junction, there are private residences nearby, and more are found up and down that whole stretch of road, just to give you an idea of this area. Here's another look at that same creek, just off to the right of Russell Road. Let's switch gears and talk about the search involved. After coming through numerous sources, I wasn't able to find much information regarding the search details, but from what I could find, Thompson's family, local authorities, and several volunteers helped aid in the search. In addition, several of Chris's co-workers got involved as well. It is unfortunate that more resources weren't allocated into this case considering the strangeness behind it. It's also one of those situations that didn't quite get the exposure and news press it deserved in those early days, as compared to the hype it's created throughout the internet community you see right now. In fact, this case was addressed by Missing 411 creator David Polites due to the bizarre circumstances behind it. I believe his coverage of it gave it the needed boost of awareness we see today. I also wanted to mention that Christopher was not the only one to vanish in that area as well, as others have disappeared over the years in that surrounding region. In 1978, a 32-year-old named David Harris went missing while hitchhiking that stretch of road about five miles east from where Christopher did. And if we go back nearly a century before that, an older fellow by the name of Orrin Williamson vanished off the front porch but in this case, he was reported to have vanished into thin air and right in front of his family. You can read all about this strange case by checking out the link below in the video description. Now getting back to the search itself, 
If anyone has more information about it, feel free to share that information in the comments section. So let's talk about what may have happened to Chris out there. There are so many roads we can take with this one, but I'll narrow it down for you to a few logical explanations and theories. Now, it was mentioned in the reports that Christopher's supervisor stated that he had been acting a bit strange and wasn't quite himself in the days leading up to his disappearance. As for what exactly he meant by this, I was unable to find any specifics. Had Chris been taking some kind of drug or medication whose symptoms had psychological implications? Was Chris suffering from depression, anxiety, or any other stressors not mentioned by the family or authorities? It's possible, but I believe this would have been addressed and considered in the investigation. But we don't hear about this. And in fact, those who knew Chris stated that he was a hard worker, quite dependable, and a great guy to be around. Was foul play involved? We need to consider that whatever happened, happened very quickly according to the observations made by Chris's co-workers. The other three men all corroborated their account on what they saw as they turned to look back at Chris just seconds after having conversation with him. Did someone grab him off the road and carry him over the barbed wire fence and into those woods? I don't believe this for one minute given the amount of speed and power this would have required in such a momentous effort in such little time with no noise or sign of a struggle. And if we consider the animal predation angle, the same logic applies. No sounds. No sign of a struggle. No tracks. No evidence to suggest this was even a possibility. Did Chris run away and vanish on his own accord? In the days leading up to his disappearance, his employer did mention he wasn't quite himself. Was Chris having some kind of mental health issue? which caused him to panic and hide from the others. And if he did run, I'm not sure anyone would be quick enough to vanish in the short time needed to do so without being detected by the others. How far could someone get without their boots? I don't believe Chris wanted to disappear. He was not known to having any prior issues that would have given credence to this scenario. I believe Chris was taken against his will, and whomever or whatever was responsible was 100% effective in achieving this without being observed or detected. Let's consider the co-workers here. Were they involved in this? Was there something sinister going on between the men we just don't know about? It was mentioned that one of the men was sentenced to time in prison for an unrelated crime some time after Chris's disappearance. But I was unable to find out what kind of crime this was, or how long the sentencing was, to indicate the severity of it. That same co-worker was questioned by authorities and eventually cleared. He also passed a polygraph test. But other than that, no further evidence has ever come forward in this case even after nearly 20 years, which makes it all more baffling for those following it. And we've seen the same scenario unfold in many other cases I've covered on this channel as well. So what the hell happened to him? Again, I believe he was forcibly taken. I also believe our first clue points to Chris's belongings left behind. The change on the road, the work tools, the blue fiber and the dangling boot on the nearby fence, and the other boot which would eventually be found by a farmer near a small pond. This all points to an abduction. But is it possible the men orchestrated all of this to lead investigators on a wild goose chase? Sure, but the evidence doesn't support this at all. I believe there is a lot more to this case than we know about, and for some reason, this information is being kept in the dark. 
Now we're left picking up the pieces and putting that puzzle together. And there's a whole lot of pieces that are still missing. There's also a whole lot of woodland, brush, and water in that region to comb through. And I believe the answer is still out there. We can only hope that another investigation into Chris's disappearance is in the works. But in the meantime, we can only speculate on what we do and don't know. But I stand by my gut feeling that Christopher was taken from that road, and I'm sure I'm not alone. Other theories include government conspiracies, false evidence or misleading info, portals, UFO abductions, and Bigfoot. I hate to say it, but anything's possible, and the more I read up on these kinds of cases, the less I protest these strange and unconventional explanations. It's a strange world we live in, and it would be naive to assume we know everything about it. Thank you for joining me in this segment, and may we never forget the sad and strange disappearance of Christopher Carlton Tompkins.